Welcome to New Realities. I'm Alan Steinfeld, and this program is about the emerging spirituality that's happening in this country and around the world, and how we're shifting from a somewhat materialistic based race of human beings to one that understands there's more than just the body, that we're connected to other realms of consciousness, that we are, in essence, spirit. And tonight's guests are representative of a new generation of women coming forward to talk about the new values in our spiritual landscape. I have next to me Megan Waterson, Elisa Vitti, and Gabrielle Bernstein. And they're all part of a weekend that Hay House is sponsoring at the Javits Center November 3rd and 4th called I Can Do It. Is that Ignite. Ignite, 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 Ignite yes. I Can Do It. So I'm really happy you're here, all of you, be be here. because each of you represent a sort of different segment of, of what's happening in the world of spirit. So for instance, you deal with the, the divine feminine. Exactly. Why, why don't you talk a little bit about what you do, and then we'll just converse about it all. So. Well, um, my keynote at Ignite is mm -hmm. going to be about getting spiritually naked, and that's also the subtitle of my book that's coming out through Hay House called Reveal. And um, what I mean by getting spiritually naked is simply revealing the essence or the truth of who we really mm -hmm. are, which I believe is love. Mm. And my book is about um, the pilgrimage I went on in order to move from a place of fear and um, anxiety to a place of love and freedom. Mm. Um, and for me, it was through the stories and the icons of the Divine Feminine. Yeah. And Elise, you deal with women on the physical level. Yes, and it was really interesting because I have a center called Flow Living, and we take care of women who have menstrual issues, fertility issues, postpartum issues. And through all my research, I really found feminine energy to be an essential component to help the body heal more effectively and also that women were finding their way to a connection to feminine energy mm -hmm. through partnership with their body for the purposes of health. But I found it really fascinating that you could kind of get to a more spiritually connected place as a woman through mm -hmm. a deeper connection with your physical body, which is kind of a cool thing versus just only thinking in that one direction. Only in the one direction of? of? You know, maybe just more esoteric, but a little. I liked the groundedness of, of coming through the body and getting to spirit. Like rather than mm -hmm. having to transcend the body mm -hmm. or sort of deny the body, right. the, the trajectory, the approach of, of the divine is by becoming fully embodied. So right. it's resonant. And don't you feel that way, Gabrielle? Uh, Absolutely. I think that it all has to work together, that we have to be really mindful of how we are treating our bodies and using our bodies and how our physical being is interconnected with our spiritual being. Mm -hmm. And much of what I believe and what I teach is that we're here having a human experience, but we're just spirits having that human experience. But the body is the vessel through which we express the spiritual messages that we learn and are here to extend. And so if we can't be a powerful container to hold those messages, then we're just this sort of message floating around without any strength and power. So and being so. the vehicle, the physical vehicle to hold the, the embodiment of spirit. Yes, and absolutely. I think, and I think women today, and we're talking today mm -hmm. about sort of a new thought leadership for young women, I yes. think we want something that feels really practical and grounded and it mm -hmm. speaks to us. So um, it's an exciting time to be working not only in, this, in the area of health, mm -hmm. but also you know, being part of the Hay House community and right. speaking there. It's just such a wonderful platform to be able to share a message of mm -hmm. connecting with the body and getting to spirit. Thank you. Mm -hmm. What was the big shift for you? Because you came from that other world. You know, in, in your book, Spirit Junkie, you were involved with drugs and all that. So what was that moment where you said, oh, it's not about that. It's about something bigger. I was only 25 when I had that sort of quarter life crisis and I realized that there had to be a better way to live and a more peaceful way and a more peaceful loving approach. Mm -hmm. And at that time I was, as you mentioned, really living in the outside world looking for my happiness and my credentials and in my relationships and in the New York City party scene and really looking outside of myself. And anyone who has had that spiritual pilgrimage, as Meg mentioned, we know that it's not going to come out there, it's going to have to come from turning and reclaiming a sense of peace within. Mm -hmm. And so um, on October 2nd of 2005, I, I prayed for a miracle because I could not continue the way I was living. 
You and were just unhappy. Well, I was, I was addicted to drugs and alcohol. Mm -hmm. I had food addiction. I mm -hmm. had work addiction, love addiction. Mm -hmm. I was really like I was addicted mm -hmm. to finding my sense of self-worth and happiness outside of myself. Mm -hmm. And so the work of really awakening spiritually always begins often with a prayer, <laughs> often with that. Prayer and a crisis. A crisis yeah. is usually the catalyst, yes. Yeah. And that, that was the case for me. I really just, I said, I need a miracle. And then, boom, what happened? Well, the next morning, morning I woke up and I really heard a very loud authoritative inner voice that that voice of our intuition the voice of God whatever you would like to call it mm -hmm. and the voice came through very loud and clear and said get clean and you will live a life beyond your wildest dreams mm -hmm. and you are <laughs> yep, I've been, I've been absolutely yes, and I've been sober seven years, and I've been uh, since that time on a very, very steadfast spiritual path, and constantly growing. I am uh, now a teacher of spirituality, but first and foremost, I'm a student, right. and the We're all always students, always, <laughs> yeah, and always letting myself be guided to what I'm ready to learn next. So I'm really happy these three women are here because they are the really the up and coming leaders and especially will be featured at this Hay House conference at the Javits Center on November 9th, 3rd and 4th. But how is women's spirituality different now as kind of you're on the forefront than it was like in the 60s or when I kind of came into it in the 80s. There were people like Jean Houston out there. and uh, I just met Jean. She's great, isn't she? She's awesome. She is really awesome. Yeah. I just need to shout that no, out. No, she's amazing. <laughs> she's an amazing teacher and she's leader just and divine. presence. And then there was Marianne Williamson, who was another power force Excellent. in that awakening movement. But how is what you're doing, all three of you, a little different or a little more... Um, contemporary to today's culture, or is there a difference? Maybe there isn't a difference. Well, but. I'd like to yeah. you know, piggyback on Gabby's shout mm -hmm. out, just to say that I think that what we're able to do now mm -hmm. is so much a part of what women before us have done. Mm -hmm. um, in a way, there was so much trailblazing that was done. I mean, for, um, for me, I went to seminary and divinity school, and the feminist theologians who came before me really helped to pave a way of looking at the, the sort of reality of the landscape that was taken for granted that most of how the divine was perceived and talked mm -hmm. about and even sort of visually imagined was in male and masculine terms. Right. And so all of the women who have taught and spoke and um, you know studied the divine feminine before me have allowed me mm -hmm. to get to a place um, where you know I feel like we're able then to ask new questions and we're mm -hmm. able to go um, you know, on because of them. But I wanted to make sure I said something about that because no, I, think I think it's so important to give that kudos and that um, mm -hmm. that sort of soul fist pump to the women who have <laughs> helped us be able to, you know, be in the places where we are right, right. now. But the, and, and I think the landscape has changed. The population is somehow open. Like a lot right. of us have been banging on right. the door for a long time. Right. And it was just so shut down, right. but it made a crack, and now exactly. there you are taking center stage. Today we have a different level of expectation mm. because of all of the women who have come before, who have been, as you say, banging on the door and, mm. and making huge strides in these conversations, whether that be health or spirituality mm. or the divine feminine. Um, we have a, an expectation that these things should be integrated into mm. our lives in some easy, practical way. We want to have that be part of the equation of how we're living our every day. And we don't want it to feel like this separate, private, weird sort of thing that's sort of marginalized mm -hmm. in our lives. We want it to be part of our morning yoga routine with our friends and we want to look cute and be talking about things that matter to us. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that's sort of where women are right now. They want to have it all and they should. And you're a great example of that. And what about you? How do you think what you're doing today is really different, Gabby? Or, or adding to what's come before, like someone like Marion Williamson, who says, you say is your teacher. How are, what you're, how are you adding to her message in your own way? 
I don't think that there's that much of a generational difference. Mm -hmm. I think that if you're a spiritual teacher, you're a spiritual teacher. And that when you claim and sign that sacred contract to teach spirituality, what you're doing is really saying, I'm going to teach this with my authentic truth. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to teach this in a way that is really genuine to who I am. So it's really irrelevant with regard to mm -hmm. what time it is that you're teaching. Uh, though, the, though there are obviously different pain bodies of different generations, mm -hmm. and there are different uh, hurdles that we need to address based on what's going on from a generational perspective. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that, the, that there's a major difference between how Marianne teaches versus how I teach versus how Megan teaches. Mm -hmm. I think we all have our own unique expression of spirit, but we're all teaching the same exact thing. There's nothing new that we're teaching. We're just, it's just, we're maybe wearing a different pair of shoes. Mm -hmm. I get, <laughs> I get that. And, and I know women in shoes, but. Um. <laughs> but I, I think your, yeah. your point well, was really well taken was mm -hmm. that this is really about, you know, we're, we're sort of reaching this place where we can be heard now. Right, I think that's. And that's really, that, that's, that's a, that's a really big point. Heard. We're not yes. being heard, so, we're not being silenced. Yes. Yeah. We're, we're maybe being that is a big, that is a generational difference. Right. And to and that point, um, we, have been given a platform and, and maybe right. the struggles that our predecessors may have experienced mm -hmm. based on you know being female and having a loud voice we are not experiencing that at all right now we are extremely held we are extremely supported welcome. we are very welcome right. um, the men in our lives support us greatly mm -hmm. and really want us to shine and that was not the case for our predecessors so that is a big difference right. and I think also there's something different about the time that we're in I mean the whole 2012 mythos whether that's real or not there's a collective that is supporting Well, that's the shift of the Piscean Age yes. to the Aquarian Age. You know, the Piscean Age mm -hmm. was about me mm -hmm. and how can I shine mm -hmm. and how can I be the leader? And it was a very uh, personal, authoritative experience, mm -hmm. whereas the Aquarian Age cannot hold that energy anymore. It's a we time. Mm -hmm. and it's a time for people to work together and congregate and support one another. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's a shift that we're all experiencing. And that's really empowering all of us to do our That's work right. in the mm -hmm. world. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the men in your lives, and you know, for my generation, the people I know, it was usually the women that were doing the spiritual work, going to the workshops, and the guys were staying home, earning the money, and um, supporting the women, but not really connected to that whole Now the women thing. are going to the spiritual workshops and earning the money. There you go. <laughs> there you go. And, you know, that's a big shift. What's the different qualities of a spiritually based Romantic relationship? Romantic relationship, uh, Well, yes. I mean, I think that there is just so much that has shifted. She just got married, and I'm just recently engaged, and mm -hmm. we've, we've all got partners that we've been with that um, I think if you're a woman at this time ready to step into your power, you're uh, very, very likely tra attracting a man who is really a confident man mm -hmm. and a man who has full faith that this woman can be and shine and do exactly what she's here to do and not have any ego around mm -hmm. that. And so that mm -hmm. is a major shift for men, which is tremendous. And Mm -hmm. And seeing so many men with their children and being stay-at-home fathers and, and really just, just really nurturing and honoring that experience and being so proud to have that experience mm -hmm. rather than seeing that as sort of a shameful thing. So that, mm -hmm. is, that, that paradigm is gone. I mean, that, sh that is a massive shift. Mm -hmm. Men are happy to be home with their kids. They're happy to let their women shine. And it is a tremendous gift that the world has been given because it's really even the playing field for everyone to really rise up. And you can let the men shine as well or shine together. Well, right? the men are shining really bright with those babies. <laughs> and, I mean, whatever it is that they're doing. I'm not saying that that's no, the only no, path. I, I know. But, but whatever the path it is that you choose is, is, is an opportunity to shine. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. What were you saying, Elisa? Well, I just think it's interesting that, um, you know, for me, just reclaiming my body as a whole Right. Not having my sexuality be any more special of a part of that mm -hmm. versus my health versus the way that I exercise versus the way that I eat, that all of that is the way that I supercharge my energetic vibration mm -hmm. is what attracts him to me and also gives him permission to be more interested in his own evolution and his own balance of masculine and feminine energy so that me being in my power doesn't emasculate Right. And in the way that, let's say, a generation ago, that was sort of more of the commonplace problem. Well, thank you for saying that, because I think in the old paradigm, the um, second chakra was so distorted. I think what's important, I mean, just to mm. speak to my own experience, which yeah. is really all I can root myself in, is, is just that the women who I spiritual, spiritually mentor, and I know what's been true for my life, is that I want 
to be able to experience my body as, sac as sacred. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to separate my spiritual experience mm -hmm. from my sexual experience. Mm -hmm. For me, it's there. It's a part of the process. So how is that integration working for like each of you in that way? I mean, that's different from what it was where it was really kind of a separate well, through my kundalini yoga practice, I have been able to not only connect to spirit on a more divine level, but also reclaim parts of my, my physical being and energetic being that has had been shut off. Mm -hmm. And so through kundalini, I have been able to awaken a really great presence within me that, that is not only just great from a sexual experience perspective, but also from a power perspective. Mm -hmm. It's the second chakra that we can so easily shut down. And the practice for me through kundalini has really helped awaken in mm -hmm. that second chakra. Mm -hmm. Alisa and Megan both have been great guides for me in that area. And really what, what has been one of the greatest gifts is just finding a practice mm -hmm. that is very, very physical and very spiritual mm -hmm. in, the same, mm -hmm. in the same breath. So. But also that there's more of a balance in the sexuality because that was such, a, in a way, a distortion in the old paradigm. The, like the last generation was like there was a repression so it had to overly express itself and, and really, um, I think, disrupted a lot of people's own natural process. Does that, does that make sense? I, I think huh? that now men are actually really excited to be with a woman who knows herself so intimately. Mm. And I think it's great that whatever that distortion was, it created an environment or a crucible that women wanted to get a little bit more comfortable with themselves. I cannot tell you how many emails we get from husbands, boyfriends, thank you so much for helping my girlfriend or wife navigate her cycle. She knows herself better. Mm. She knows how to interact with her life better. And therefore I, as her partner, can interact with her better too. Oh. So I feel like information is a power source for relationships when it comes to dealing with the differences between the sexes. And it's not necessarily a bad thing when there's full disclosure. Yeah, absolutely. There should be. That's what makes a relationship healthy. So how does what Elisa said hook into this whole understanding of the divine feminine from a spiritual point of view? For you? Uh, well, I was just going to add that uh, a lot of the women that I work with are really interested in experiencing the divine, not just on Sunday, mm -hmm. you know, not just on holidays or like it's special occasions, but every day, every moment, and in every breath. Mm -hmm. So that um, it's, it's really kind of the, the spiritual practice is really always having a sense of being connected to what is divine within us. Which is At what? all points, but, everywhere. But what is that? I refer to it as my soul voice. Mm -hmm. um, because my experience of it is, is an encounter with my soul and that is for me um, my connection to the divine is through my soul and that that experience of feeling my soul within mm -hmm. and you know listening and being guided by my soul and a lot of the work that I do is with other women is about helping them connect mm -hmm. to that within them yeah I mean I think where your work really goes together is I think we said it before, This we're incarnated as spirit into form, so we have to embody, right. we, embodying spirit. And if we feel it in our bodies, this presence, the soul, then we are unified beings. Well, right. think about it this way. Your soul voice, as, as Megan talks mm -hmm. about it, speaks to you mm -hmm. all the time. But you need to have two physical tools to access it. First, you need to be able to uh, like geolocate, as I like to call it. Like, where are you? Where is it arriving in you? The voice. Yeah. Are you feeling it more in your mm -hmm. third chakra? Are you feeling it in your second chakra? Are you feeling it up here? Where Where is that happening for you? Because it can actually um, influence how you interpret mm -hmm. the message of that um, information. And then, secondly, that divine feminine energy of nurturing, mm -hmm. right? The message that's been gifted to you. How are you gonna nurture it? Because you can't just, we're not just thought bodies that we're gonna go flying off at the speed of thought as soon as we hear an in, a, a message from the divine or connection or an intuition. We have to come with our bodies to right. that next point of destination or on that next chapter of the journey. So how do we use our bodies to nurture this expression of divine energy that's coming through. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that is through self-care and pleasure, 
right? Having fun. Feeling, taking good care of the vessel and feeling good in the vessel. If you're feeling bad, you're, you know, the, 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 uh, there's going to be a lot of static. White noise, it. yeah. White noise, yeah, beautifully put. And <laughs> If you're feeling so, a lot of stress or something, you're not going to be able if, to. Yeah, uh, if your adrenals are fried, if you're fatigued, if you're having, you know, every month you're taking, you know, a lot of women struggle with PMDD, premenstrual dysphoric disorder. Dysphoric? Yes, What's it's like dysphoric? extreme PMS, right? Okay. Or, you know, just any normal amount of hormonal imbalance that most women walk around mm -hmm. thinking about is normal takes you out of being in alignment with the channel of information that's coming to you from the divine because you're having that white noise, you're not right. feeling your best, you're not as open, you're so struggling but, with the but, with the body. But using your, you know, protocol. technique, protocol, yes, that's a good way, and by being embodied, then you can access the voice, the still, the still small voice, this voice of spirit that wants to be embodied. We've come to be embodied right. and to love the body. And for me, that was my journey, and that's why I get so excited about talking about the feminine, because I was not looking for it. You know, I was a, on my way to being a doctor at Johns Hopkins. I was, I was interested more in the physical aspects of the body. And through healing from a hormonal collapse that mm. I suffered with in my early 20s and not being able to function normally to a place where I was, it, it opened up that channel, and I started hearing, you know, intuitive messaging, and I thought, what is this? this is Did you really think you were going crazy? No, but I, oh. I didn't. I just, I, you know, being a researcher, I was like, well, what, what is all of this information? What's this data and what is it telling me? Mm -hmm. And I found that it was a, the next piece of really anchoring in my health and well-being. And then, of course, once you heal your body from any illness or any disorder, any mm -hmm. disease, you're left with a big question, which is, now what am I going to use this wild and precious life for? Mm, you know, now I, have the, now I have the full access to my power and my energy. What can I, how can I serve? What can I do? Where can I channel my life force? And it's exciting because if women start to play that bigger game, and this is what I talk a lot about in my book and in the talk that I'll be giving mm -hmm. on November 3rd, mm -hmm. If you think about tuning into your body for the purpose of tuning in and channeling in mm -hmm. to your life's purpose, then we get out of those modes of self-sabotaging. I mean, how many more women need to go through like going on some sort of health kick and then getting off right. and then going on and getting off? I mean, I think we've all learned the lesson, which is that, that chasing a state of perfect health is a losing game. Mm -hmm. But nurturing the body, which is a divine feminine quality, um, is a way the that the body you, is feminine. Absolutely, it's, 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 it's of yeah, it's of matter, right? right. And so, how can we um, channel that energy toward something that's greater than us? Because that's what really lights us up. Well, I, I my belief has always been mm -hmm. that there is a direct connection between our ideas of the divine and the disproportionate amount of violence that is done to women uh, and girls. Oh, uh, you know, so so without the, a balanced idea of the divine as both masculine and feminine, male and female, yeah. the female sex gets um, brutalized, dominated, um, victimized in a way that's disproportionate to the male. I've always felt that that's like the big elephant in the room. Well, when you're talking about the ego, you're really not talking about the body. And I, I had the pleasure of, I mean, I was at an event, to, a fundraiser for Somali Mom, and Somali walked right up to me, and she starts a conversation oh, with Somali? me. Somali Mom does this extraordinary work um, in Vietnam or the Philippines. Wow. Both. And I know girls come from both of those places, and she, um, she saves girls from sex trafficking oh. and rehabilitates them, and it, meaning loves them, cooks for them. You know, she was saying, oh, yes, I, I, I wish I was home chopping vegetables and making food for my girls. They're her mm -hmm. children. Mm -hmm. And they, these, when, these young girls who are saved from sex trafficking are uh, look at her with, uh, you know, adoration and, and, and love and respect. And we got into this really interesting conversation about how they're so eager to learn about how their bodies work, mm -hmm. how to take care of their bodies, how to be healthy, because they re recognize that without that information, they're powerless. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, maybe it's not going to come from the top down where, you know, the religions are going to figure right. it out. And oh, no, I, don't I like think it's, I think it's the, outside. I'm very impatient. the outsiders. Like yeah. Absolutely. I, I think it would be just much more effective if women 
got really interested in what was all about themselves, every detail about their bodies. Where do we have to look in history to see women not just taking up a little bit more space and everything shifting like like Tetris around yeah, you know, what, social convention? Yeah, I mean, what Jean Houston says, we talked about her earlier, is that the, the ability for women to be on equal terms with men in doubles our chance of genius and creativity within the civilization. Right. Right. Well, this has been very exciting. Absolutely. And I'm happy you're the rising stars on the spiritual horizon there. <laughs> so just talk about also what you'll be saying, what you'll be addressing at the upcoming conference, the I Can Do It Ignite conference. So you well, I'm so thrilled to have been here today, and I hope you can join me November 3rd and 4th at Ignite, the Hay House event here in New York at the Javits Center. I will be speaking about my own spiritual journey and how we can release all that blocks us from the presence of love and power and miracles within us. So I hope you will join us on November 3rd and 4th at Hay House Ignite. Thank you, Alan. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Okay. I'm really looking forward to chatting with more of you at the Ignite Conference on November 3rd and 4th at the Javits. I'll be talking about women manifesting and hormones, how you can use your body to create the most extraordinary life that you can, and of course sharing my story of hormonal recovery as a younger woman. So please join us at the Javits on November 3rd and 4th. And what's your website? Flowliving.com. And what's it about? Give us a look. Yeah, if you're dealing with menstrual issues, fertility issues, you want to get pregnant, you're going through IVF, or you've had children and you're dealing with postpartum issues, um, if you'd like to have a natural approach that's food-based to bring your hormones back into balance, um, Flowliving.com is the gold standard resource for that at the time. And Megan, what are you going to be talking about at the upcoming? event? I'm going to be speaking about getting spiritually naked, um, which for me is simply about revealing the truth of who we are, um, which in my experience is divine love. Um, and I'll be talking about the pilgrimage that I went on to the Divine Feminine, um, to Black Madonna sites and Legends of the Mary Magdalene, um, and the way that that allowed me to move from a place of extreme anxiety and fear to a place of love and freedom. And um, my website is meganwaterson.com. And um, for women in the New York City area, I have a women's spirituality group called the Red Ladies that you can find out about there. Thank you. That was fun because as you share your wisdom, it kind of plants seeds in the population for how to live a different life. That's why I call it's the great. show New Realities. New Reality is great. It's because it's about... We have to create them. Yeah, it's about doing something in a brand new way because the old way doesn't work anymore. We've reached a dead end in the old paradigm. So we need people who are energized, alive, excited about what they have to offer. And that's infusing more power in the world. So thank you, Megan, Elisa, and Gabrielle Bernstein for being here. This is Alan Steinfeld for New Realities. Thanks for watching tonight. I, I feel I really got a lot out of the wisdom that, I, um, that came out here at this table. So if you're interested in finding out more about other programs on New Realities, go to my website, newrealities.com, or email me at newrealities at earthlink.net. Thanks for watching.